prophecy isn't just a part of the Bible. It's woven into its very fabric, making up nearly 30% of the entire text. Why? To give us a divine heads up, so we're ready when events begin to unfold. Jesus himself made this clear in Matthew 24, 24 to 25, warning us, for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. What's even more astounding is that many of these prophetic words are coming to life right now. Let's dive into 10 end times Bible prophecies happening as we speak. 1. Scoffers in the last days, Peter 3, 3, 4. In 2 Peter 3, 3 to 4, the apostle warns us of a significant end time sign. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. This prophecy is strikingly relevant today. We live in an era where skepticism about the Bible and the promises of God is at an all-time high. Research from the Pew Research Center and the General Social Survey reveals a sharp decline in the number of Christians in the United States since the 1990s. Increasingly, people identify as atheist, agnostic, or nothing in particular, a category often referred to as the nuns. According to Pew, the percentage of Americans identifying as Christian fell from 75% in 2011 to 63% by 2021, while those claiming no religious affiliation rose to nearly 30%. Adding to this is the rise of vocal critics who openly mock faith, dismissing the return of Christ as a fairy tale or irrelevant relic of the past. Even within the Christian community, there are factions rejecting the literal second coming of Jesus, viewing it instead as a metaphor or outdated teaching. This growing skepticism aligns precisely with Peter's warning about scoffers walking according to their own lusts, driven by a worldview focused on self-gratification rather than faith in God's promises. These trends underscore the fulfillment of this prophecy in real time, reminding believers to remain steadfast amidst a culture increasingly dismissive of eternal truths. 2. Lawlessness will abound. The Bible repeatedly prophesies that lawlessness will characterize the last days. Jesus warned in Matthew 24, 12, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Similarly, Paul describes in 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, a society marked by selfishness, pride, disobedience, and a lack of self-control. While 2 Thessalonians 2 speaks of a man of lawlessness, as a central figure in the end times. Lawlessness today is more than a spiritual state. It's visibly rampant in our societies. Crime rates, particularly in major cities, are rising to alarming levels. Acts of theft are increasingly committed in broad daylight, with looters walking into stores and brazenly taking what they want, often without fear of prosecution. In some jurisdictions, Legal thresholds for petty theft have been raised so high that many crimes are effectively decriminalized, emboldening repeat offenders. The issue is not limited to theft. Violent crimes, online fraud, and human trafficking are on the rise, reflecting a global erosion of morality and accountability. The chilling result? A world where the love of many grows cold, as relationships, communities, and even nations struggle under the weight of distrust and indifference. Lawlessness also manifests in cultural defiance of God's moral laws. From the normalization of unethical behavior to the celebration of sin in media and politics, society has embraced attitudes that reject biblical truth, fulfilling these ancient prophecies with striking precision. Three, as in the days of Noah, Jesus draws a direct parallel between the end times 
and the days of Noah in Matthew 24, 37 to 39. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. What were the days of Noah like? Genesis 6, 5 paints a stark picture. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This description resonates deeply with modern society. We live in a time where moral boundaries are eroded, and humanity increasingly pursues self-indulgence at the expense of righteousness. The prevalence of violence, corruption, and depravity mirrors the spiritual climate of Noah's era. One striking parallel is the blatant disregard for God and His commands. Just as Noah's contemporaries mocked the idea of impending judgment, today's culture scoffs at warnings about accountability before God. The normalization of immorality, whether in entertainment, politics, or personal behavior, demonstrates a collective turning away from biblical principles. Furthermore, the days of Noah were marked by apathy and complacency. Despite Noah's warnings, people continued their daily lives, oblivious to the approaching flood. Similarly, today's world seems indifferent to the signs of the times, prioritizing material pursuits over spiritual readiness. These parallels are not just historical coincidences. They are prophetic markers. As believers, these signs should prompt us to stay vigilant, grounded in God's Word, and prepared for Christ's return. Wars and Rumors of Wars In Matthew 24, 6-7, Jesus foretold a time marked by widespread conflict. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. This prophecy resonates strongly with today's geopolitical climate. The tension between the United States and major powers like Russia and China is escalating. The US and China regularly clash over Taiwan, while North Korea continues its aggressive rhetoric, frequently threatening nuclear action. Meanwhile, the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine has reshaped European security, and the Middle East remains a hot spot of violence. In recent weeks, Israel has faced attacks from Hamas, and Iran has joined the fray, heightening fears of a broader regional war. Globally, we are witnessing a convergence of wars and rumors of wars like never before. While the conflict has always existed, the scale, frequency, and global interconnectivity of modern wars make this a unique fulfillment of Jesus' warning. Yet, as Jesus reminds us, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. These wars are not the end, but a sign of the times encouraging believers to stay steadfast and focused on God's promises. 5. Hatred Toward Israel The rising hostility toward Israel is a direct fulfillment of end-time prophecies. In Zechariah 12, 1-3, the prophet warns, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy vividly describes the increasing global tensions surrounding Israel, particularly Jerusalem. The nation has faced relentless attacks, both militarily and politically, from surrounding nations and organizations like Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran. These entities are vocal in their aim to erase Israel from the map. The recent wars involving Hamas and Iran only amplify this fulfillment, 
as nations continually align against Israel. Beyond physical attacks, Israel faces immense political pressure on the global stage, with international organizations and governments often scrutinizing its actions disproportionately. Anti-Semitism, too, is on the rise worldwide, further underscoring the unique and prophetic hostility directed at God's chosen nation. 6. The Destruction of Damascus The Bible contains a chilling prophecy about Damascus in Isaiah 17.1, The Burden Against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. This prophecy, written over 3,000 years ago, seems to be edging closer to fulfillment. Once one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world, Damascus has suffered devastating damage due to the Syrian civil war. Large sections of the city lie in ruins, and ongoing conflicts in the region threaten to escalate the destruction further. Jeremiah 49, 23-27 echoes this prophecy, painting a grim picture of Damascus's fate in the last days. These events also tie into a broader longing for peace and safety. Amid global turmoil, the cry for peace and safety is louder than ever, fulfilling the warning in 1 Thessalonians 5.3. For when they say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. International organizations such as the United Nations and the World Economic Forum are scrambling to address global instability, but their efforts often fall short. This collective desperation for peace mirrors biblical prophecy, highlighting humanity's inability to achieve lasting security apart from God. Seven. Signs of Natural Disasters and Global Distress Adding to the end-time signs, Jesus warned of famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in Matthew 24, 7 through 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. These signs are increasingly evident. According to the World Food Program, Approximately 41 million people face severe food insecurity globally, and climate change continues to exacerbate agricultural challenges. Pestilences such as COVID-19 and other emerging diseases underscore the fragility of global health systems. Meanwhile, earthquakes are becoming more frequent and intense. Data from the U.S. Geological Survey USGS, confirms that major earthquakes have exceeded long-term averages more than a dozen times over the past 50 years. Combined with other natural disasters like hurricanes, floods, and wildfires, the Earth itself seems to be groaning under the weight of sin and judgment. 8. The Desire for a One-World Government The Bible foretells a time when a global system of governance will emerge centralizing power under one leader. This prophecy is detailed in Daniel 2, Daniel 7, Revelation 17, and Revelation 18. Revelation 13 expands on this, describing a one-world economic and religious system led by the Antichrist. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Revelation 13, 16 to 17. This prophecy points to a future where loyalty to the Antichrist is mandatory, symbolized by a mark that controls access to the global economy. Those who resist will face persecution and martyrdom. Modern movements toward global governance and centralization hint at the foundation being laid for this system. The World Health Organization, WHO, has proposed a global health care system seeking to unify responses to global health crises under a single framework. Similarly, King Charles has called for a vast military-style campaign 
to address global issues, suggesting the need for centralized leadership to marshal resources and coordinate solutions. His statement underscores the growing sentiment for a singular global authority to tackle existential challenges. These developments echo the warnings in prophecy, highlighting the increasing push toward a one-world government that will ultimately fulfill the biblical vision of the end times. 9. The Antichrist's Peace Treaty Before consolidating power in a one-world system, the Antichrist will broker a significant peace treaty in the Middle East. Daniel 9.27 describes this pivotal moment. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. The prophecy indicates that this agreement will initially bring peace, but will be broken halfway through its seven-year duration. The Antichrist's betrayal will lead to desolation, fulfilling what is known as the abomination of desolation. Recent events in the Middle East align with this prophecy. The Abraham Accords, signed in 2020, represent a historic step toward regional peace, establishing agreements between Israel and several Arab nations. Additionally, the Abrahamic family house in Abu Dhabi, a complex uniting a mosque, church, and synagogue, symbolizes efforts to promote interfaith harmony. While these efforts aim to foster peace, they also seem to pave the way for the Antichrist's seven-year treaty, a critical milestone in biblical prophecy. As unrest in the Middle East continues, movements toward peace take on new prophetic significance, suggesting that these events are precursors to the fulfillment of Daniel 9.27. 10. Increasing Hatred Toward Israel the Bible consistently warns of growing hostility toward Israel in the last days. Zechariah 12, 1 to 3 prophecies. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples. I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces. This prophecy is unmistakable in its focus on Israel as the epicenter of global tension. Today, we see this unfolding with the frequent conflicts Israel faces. Wars with Hamas, attacks from Iran, and mounting international pressure highlight the increasing opposition to Israel's existence and policies. Beyond military conflicts, political hostility is rampant. Nations and global organizations frequently criticize Israel's actions, often disproportionately compared to other nations. The UN, for instance, has issued more resolutions against Israel than any other country. This rising antagonism is a clear fulfillment of biblical warnings about the unique enmity Israel would face in the last days. The Second Coming of Jesus Christ One of the central promises of the Bible is the return of Jesus Christ. Prophecies about his first coming, over 300 of which were fulfilled with pinpoint accuracy, validate the reliability of Scripture. These include detailed predictions about his birthplace, ministry, death, and resurrection, all of which came to pass. Similarly, the Bible contains numerous prophecies about his second coming, described as a time of judgment and restoration. Revelation 19.11-16 portrays Christ returning as a victorious king, bringing justice and establishing his eternal kingdom. However, this event will also mark the end of opportunity for those who have rejected him. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Revelation 1.7 For believers, the Second Coming is a source of hope and anticipation. But for those who have not accepted Christ, it serves as a sobering reminder of the urgency to turn to Him before it's too late. As we witness these signs unfolding, the call to respond becomes more urgent than ever. The opportunity to embrace His love, grace, and guidance is still available, but the time to act is now. 
My prayer is that you find hope and peace in His promises and live in readiness for His return. Thank you for reading, and may God's blessings be with you always.